We drew it up like this, and here's the slightly longer version of how we transformed this living room into something special. So we started by clearing out all of the furniture. The TV was way too high, so that's coming down too. Then we had to tear out the baseboards, but only the parts where this built-in is going to occupy that wall space. I used an oscillating multi-tool to cut through the baseboards. Then I also had to punch in a few holes for the TV cables to run behind the wall. Then it was time to make a few measurements, so I grabbed my laser measure, which shoots in two different directions, so capturing a few measurements was super easy and really fun for the dogs. <laughs> I have it linked down below for you if you want to check it out. Then we're ready to install a couple wall panels with some liquid nails and a nail gun that we were able to easily tack them in with. These are just primed MDF panels with a simple wood design on it that'll make a nice backdrop for the rest of the built-in. But once we got that done, I was off on my own in the garage and I was ready to put together the bottom base cabinet for this enormous build. So I started by creating a face frame by simply using some pocket holes and clamping sticks together and it was assembled pretty quickly. And if you'd like to learn more about the dimensions and specs about this thing, I'll try to get drawings up on my Instagram soon. Then I grabbed sheets of plywood and ripped them down to 14 and a half inch strips so I can use those to attach to the face frame for all of my side panels and shelves and just simply using pocket holes again to attach it to the face frame. I usually do whatever it takes to make sure screws are concealed as much as possible whenever I build a piece like this. Then it's as simple as using clamps to make sure everything is perfectly held into place before I secure anything permanently. Then I grabbed another piece of plywood and made it roughly three quarters of an inch wider than the rest of the cabinet to create the top. This thing is all assembled, but I did a few other things to prepare it like sanding all the surfaces smooth and drilling holes large enough for cables to run through the cabinet because I always forget to do that until later. And because I use plywood, I wanna cover up the plywood edges by edge banding it. And that's as simple as heating up an iron so the glue melts and adheres to the edge of the plywood for a nicer finish. Next, it was time to work on the overhead shelves and framework around the TV. And this is the part of the project that connects the base cabinet and the backdrop for a complete design from floor to ceiling. It also makes the TV look much bigger. So what I did was create my face frame again. Then I took seven and a quarter inch plywood strips to create the side panels and shelves that will exist over the TV. This also takes things to the next level with the decor and that part you won't wanna miss. Once that was built, I just needed to fill nail holes so they're invisible when we're ready to paint. But first I have to prime all of the bare wood surfaces because it'll seal the wood grain and make it less visible when we're ready to paint the actual color. And the exciting part is watching this color come to life because we went back and forth a lot on what we wanted to go with. At first we thought of a black, but we also thought a more neutral beige, but we ended up deciding on a color that would create a little pop for this room. We needed it to look like it belonged to the person who lives here and we're really happy with the result. But then the even more exciting part was installing this thing permanently to the wall. And thankfully we built this piece in sections to make it much easier to move this thing into place. But there still were a lot of details that needed to be worked on and this is what what separates this piece from something you purchase from a box. So to finish this thing from top to bottom, I want to install a simple floor trim to the front and sides of it and a simple crown molding at the top and make it look more of a custom piece that is made specifically for this home. Next was installing the four doors that are going to cover up all the cables and other boxes that don't need to be visible. So I started by boring out a couple holes so I could install the hardware. And I always go with soft closed doors because one, they're so satisfying to watch, but they also last longer than standard door hinges and they're easier on the wood finish. And if you're curious, installing doors is very simple, especially if you're comparing it to trying to create drawers because there's much less hardware involved and fewer pieces to assemble. Then I never forget to clean up my own mess. And finally, we were super excited to install the TV, so I'm pretty sure we installed it before the paint even had a chance to fully dry. We made sure it was at the proper viewing height and certain proximity to the base cabinet, and we made sure that we had studs located in the bracket level with the rest of the piece. But we still weren't done yet because I needed to install a couple door handles to help style the built-in. We went with a silver to complement other hardware finishes in the house. And I would say the most important part of this entire thing is what Gabby is handling right now, which is styling the piece nicely with books, plants, picture frames, and candles, and I could not be happier with how this thing turned out.